And we are live, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing channel. Before we get going today, please make sure to like the video, comment your prediction down below and please subscribe to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing my Punch Perfect prediction for Tim Zhu versus Terrell Gachet, live this Saturday on Showtime. Here in the UK I think you'll be able to catch it on Fight TV, obviously it's about 6 or 7 quid I think, but you'll have to uh, have to watch it on there, obviously in the US it'll be Showtime and then around the world I'm not so sure. But really looking forward to this fight, I said uh, you know in a couple of uh, uh, news reaction videos and stuff that I think this is a really smart move and I'll get a little bit into why but for Tim Zhu really knocking on the door now of a world title opportunity he'll be due one before the end of the year we hope and I've been really impressed with his progression we see a lot of uh we see a lot of sons go into boxing because of their fathers I mean I'm from the UK and we've seen in more recent times Chris Eubank Jr Connor Ben and Campbell Hatton three guys that honestly just in my opinion felt like they got into boxing because they could work off the back of their father's name that they'd built not much amateur experience between the three of them and really and truly Chris Eubanks always fallen short at world level Connor Ben looks promising to an extent but we're not sure how far he can go and Campbell Hatton at this stage he's too young to really judge but he doesn't look like he's going to get to any sort of decent standard whereas with Tim Zhu it's nice it's, it's refreshing to see someone that looks like they can live up to the height Will he be a, a sort of Hall of Fame level fighter like his father? Maybe not, but at this stage, I think he looks destined to at least win a world title at 154. And I think he'll move up eventually as well because he's a big lad and we may see him compete at two divisions at 160 eventually. So really prom promising fighter. I like how they've been matching him. And the thing I've loved about Tim Zhu recently as well, as a world level contender, He's still been fighting regularly. He fought three times last year. Even in 2020, which was a year where people struggled to get fights because boxing wasn't on for a while because of you know what. He still fought twice in 2020. He's fought three times in 2021. And I love that he's not been one of these fighters that's just sort of waited around for his opportunity and just sort of kept busy in the gym but not really fought no he's kept on fighting opponents taking on different variations of opponents as well facing different styles and and trying to get ready and i love that he's doing that i thought his last fight against takuma and Nue was a perfect bit bit of matchmaking because he needs to start facing some big strong 154 pounders and Nue was exactly that gave him some problems in the fight as well but I thought it was an impressive display he showed good composure a little bit forceful at times but I think he's been matched really well he's coming along nicely and I think he's ready for a world title now but this is the toughest fight of his career in my opinion Terrell Gachet is someone that's competed at world level he's always sort of fallen short but we've seen that he's at least got the ped pedigree to be competitive there he's got the amateur background as well he was a fantastic amateur and Olympian but also just you know in terms of the national championships uh, competing in America he was a brilliant amateur one of the best in his country so I think he's he's a really good level fighter the best boxer in my opinion that that uh, Tim Zhu has faced up to until this stage so I think it's a great bit of matchmaking a great uh, great step up for him and he's continuing to take step ups but I think the reason I love this fight so much is something Australian fighters have done in the past is is stay in Australia they occasionally come over for a title shot or whatever but really and truly they stay in Australia because that's where they they can fill out a stadium that's where they can fill out arenas that's where they can sell the most tickets and I think for Tim Zhu ultimately if he wins a belt people should have to go to Australia to fight him and you know he should sell out stadiums there that's where he'll make his most most money etc so I don't think he should you know move away from Australia that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is is as the contender I think he's he's been kept very separate from Charlo and Castano and there's been quotes flying about you know back and forth between the camps and they've never really felt like they're in the same realm as each other but by coming over to America fighting on Showtime and PBC which is the same platform that Jamel Charlo's been fighting on for a while he's going to be fighting on this platform in in May against Castano for the rematch coming over to the same platform being around the, the sort of same gyms and stuff in preparation, being in Vegas and, you know, fighting Terrell Gachet, who Charlo is very familiar with, Castano is familiar with as well. I think this is a great way to start sort of clipping at the hills and really getting yourself ready for that title shot because I think a title shot will come in America if he does face one of those guys. Just for context, I'm not 100% sure he faces the winner of Castano versus Charlo. Reason being, 
I think if Charlo wins, those belts become fragmented and he moves up. I think he's been wanting to move up for a while. If he'd have won the Castano fight, he would have already moved up. Um, and I think those belts will become fragmented because there is a long line of mandatories now. Mertes Aliyev's been waiting ages with the IBF. Um, Ericsson Lubin's had a, quite a few eliminators now. He's got another one coming up as well, waiting with the WBC. Um, Israel Madrimov has now got into a prime position with the WBA. He'll be calling for a shot. And then obviously Tim Zhu as well in the WO, WBO position. The WBO were trying to force this fight instead of the undisputed. You know, they had to give approval for this. So... There's a long line of mandatories. I think Charlo will definitely move up, and I think he'll try and clear some room for Spence to move up as well. Castano, I'm a little bit more confident would defend those belts, but it's just whether he can defend all of them and whether he picks a certain mandatory or not or has to vacate. And So Tim Zhu may get a vacant title shot over in Australia, and maybe some of this conversation becomes redundant. But I just think at this stage... Applying a bit of pressure, getting the American audience familiarised with yourself, making Charlo and Castano feel like you're around. You're not just doing your thing over the other side of the planet. You're you're right on their toes. You're in and around the, the same fight cards now. You know, when the fight comes around in May between Castano and Charlo, does Tim Zhu stick around for a little bit longer? Turn up to a couple of presses, show your face. You don't have to trash talk or anything, but just sort of stand in the back of the room and, and sort of make yourself noticed. I think this is a really good marketing opportunity for Tim Zhu and a chance to, to, to get his name out there. But one thing he has to do this weekend is make a statement. If he goes out there and has a close fight with Terrell Gachet and, you know, obviously the thing we're going to get into in this is Gachet's never been stopped. If he can stop him... That's a massive statement, and I think that's the thing he needs, really, to, to get himself out there. If he does have a close fight, maybe a lacklustre performance, maybe a points decision that's comfortable but doesn't necessarily set the world alight, that might not be what, what Tim Zhu needs to, to get himself out there in America. But I think the stoppage could be the thing. So what problems does, does Terrell Gachet present? If you've read the quotes from Gachet, he said that he finds Tim Zhu a little bit repetitive. And now... I think that's a good piece of analysis from him and his team because that's one thing I would say with Tim Zhu. Sometimes he lacks a bit of variation and if he sees success from something, he'll just continuously pound that. And if you fight an opponent that can adapt a little bit or starts to defend it or starts to read those situations, that's where Tim Zhu can become a bit frustrated. I felt like against Inoue a little bit, he started really trying to force the body shots and he could have had opportunities to switch upstairs and then open up downstairs. And when he started doing that and showing more variation, those opportunities came. So it's interesting that Gachet has noticed that. I think he'll Gachet will try and offer him looks where Tim Zhu thinks he's getting to him and then Gachet will start to defend that and try and force him to, to continuously do things that he can prepare himself against. Gachet's got good pedigree. He's explosive, but he hasn't got much power, but he's explosive. He... He can explode with big shots from any angle. He likes to put threes and fours together. It's quite rare from Gachet that you'll just see one big right hand or one big left hook. He's good with the jab, throws out the jab really solid. And I think that's one thing Tim Zhu has to establish is, is winning that battle, the jab. So Gachet is dangerous, but he doesn't hit very hard. So I don't think he'll be able to hurt Tim Zhu. He did hurt Lubin, but Lubin's got one of the worst chins in the sport. But he can explode with a shot at any moment. So he can land those punches and he can impress the judges. So... Uh, an explosive athletic fighter with good boxing skills he'll look to establish the jab he likes to he offers different looks cachet with sim fights where he's gone on the back foot and he's sort of been the one that's on the run and he's tried to box his way around his opponent we've also seen him go after his opponents and look more aggressive than we've ever seen before so it'll be interesting something with cachet though that's worth noting um his last six opponents have been southpaws he hasn't fought an orthodox fighter in years now. You look at the run of southpaws that he's faced, you know, in Clark, Trout, Lara, Lubin, etc. You know, he's been on a run of fighting southpaws. So he's not fought an orthodox fighter in a while. So this will come as something new to him. Tim Zhu's been fighting orthodox fighters, so he'll be used to it. I think for Tim Zhu, establish the jab. I think that's the battle that you need to win. I think you also need to establish centre of the ring. When Gachet is able to box from the centre of the ring and he's able to be quite physically dominant and impose himself a little bit and land his shots, he looks more comfortable. When he's on the back foot, he seems to reel a little bit and looks like he doesn't get doesn't like to be hit as much and I don't think he's quite got the same snap when he's reeling and he's on the back foot so I think establish the center of the ring imposure impose your reach and your size and I think just land big with the right hand 
but vary it because as Gachet has pointed out, you can be a little bit repetitive at times. So throw it to the body. That's Tim Zhu's best shot, in my opinion, the body shots. That's where the sort of source of all his success has come in, in his recent showings. I think that's what he's sort of become renowned for is the body shots. I think really pin that body when you're on the inside. Um, I don't think Gachet likes that. I've seen in some of his fights where he's worked up close, he doesn't like being hit to the body. He maintains a really tight guard and he doesn't like to get hit there. So ping the body and I think the upstairs will open up. Both times that I've seen Gachet dropped, once against Lara, was an uppercut through the middle, and another time against Hernandez, he was dropped as well by an overhand right. I think if you want to land that overhand right, you have to go to the body and sort of lay those foundations and make Gachet think you'll go in there, and then switch upstairs. In terms of prediction, I'm struggling to work out whether I think Gachet gets stopped or not. I do think Tim Zhu will win this fight ultimately. I'm rooting for him to win this fight. I want to see him in, in, the, uh, in the mix with Charlo, Castano, etc. I think he wins. I'm really torn on whether he stops him or not. Regardless, I think Gachet hits the deck in this fight. But I do think he's tough. I do think he's durable. I want Tim Zhu to make a statement and get the stoppage. I don't think he quite gets it, but I think he knocks him down at least once. And I think he gets a, a fairly comfortable points decision and people will be impressed with him on his US debut. So I'm looking forward to this. Looking forward to the fight. Make sure to check it out, guys. Leave your uh your predictions down below i've got my prediction out for kiko martinez and josh warrington as well please go check that out subscribe to the channel and i'll catch you next time